What's up everybody and welcome to Maximize the Business of You. I'm Maximino and thank you for joining me again on another episode of Maximize. Today we are talking cryptocurrencies. The world is changing right before our eyes and we need to get educated on crypto right now. I have a special guest man. He is a crypto enthusiast. He's been immersed in this cryptocurrency space for the last four years. His name is Maurice Gallego, aka Mr. Mo. Mr. Mo, what's up, baby? Max, how are you, brother? Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you for joining me. Um, so, crypto, it's, um, it's changing the world. It's changing the future of banking, the changing of the way we think about money. So I wanted to talk to you because you have so much knowledge and I've been learning a lot from you. So I wanted to bring you into my community so you could share some of that knowledge because in our communities, we usually don't get that kind of information. And I felt like this would be a good platform to share that because we usually don't get that type of information. So before we start, give us a little background on your journey in crypto and how you became so passionate about it. Sure. So let me, let me go back a little bit. So born and raised in New York, uh, I became a technical engineer at, uh, at 13, working in recording studios. So I've always been uh, on the technical side Though I do do some creative and some production, uh, it's always been uh, a little bit more focused on the technology. Uh, I was able to use a lot of what I learned in the studio and was able to grow and build a business uh, with recording studios plus production. And I did that for about a good 10 years. Uh, eventually, I exited that business because that business was changing because of software, because of new uh, technology inventions like peer-to-peer uh, -peer technology, the early days of Napster, and then after that, Nutella, and then BitTorrent, and that, that changed a lot of things for our industry. Um, took a little bit, bit of a break and then moved on uh, to uh, working in the film world. Uh, really on the finance, more on the finance side, and took a break from that and eventually discovered uh, cryptocurrencies and went down that deep rabbit hole of understanding what is this, how does this work, does it actually have any value, do people use it, will it be part of our future? And the answer uh, that I've uh, come uh, to terms with is yes, uh, crypto is something that is here to stay and uh, i think it's going to be it's going to have a huge impact uh for everyone uh this in the same manner that the internet had impact uh 20 years ago uh, a lot of people didn't have an email didn't have uh you know didn't understand the the, the fundamentals of the internet uh, and it and it takes time it takes time but uh, no doubt about it crypto is here especially now with uh, what central banks are doing here in this country and throughout the world. So it is, um, it's, it's a really great time to start to take steps and learn the basics and the fundamentals of what is a cryptocurrency or what is a token. Not every, uh, not every crypto is an actual currency. Uh, you have to think of it as programmable money or a programmable uh, asset. Um, so uh, just just to uh, just to go back to what you were saying, I, I uh, I'm a big believer that we need to make sure that we also are pushing forward the financial mm -hmm. education 
for Latinos uh, in general and, and people of color uh, and uh, moving into these new ecosystems uh, because uh, this is the future. So the same way that you learned about surfing, searching, yep. email, uh, social media platforms, uh, the same way you learned about that is the same way that you will learn about uh, cryptocurrencies and, and finance. The, the difference is today is things move a little bit faster and uh, we are we're, we're living in an age where now the smartphone is at the center of everything. So you can literally do so much uh, uh, on the smartphone. But the idea is this. How do how, how can we how can we improve trade and commerce and, and just make a more uh, balanced and uh, a much efficient more too, right? system uh, throughout yeah, uh, yeah. efficient, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's that's the beauty of what blockchain does. It, it makes it very efficient to do a transaction and a settlement. So, Mr. Mo, yeah. let's take it back yeah. to 2008. OK, uh, financial crisis is 2007, 2008. Housing market is crashing. So how was Bitcoin created? Because it, it is the first cryptocurrency created and it was created by a mysterious person. Can you explain that whole story? Yeah. So in 2008, we had a financial collapse that had a, a huge impact here in the country and throughout the world. And what we discovered in that process is there was a, a, a big amount of trust that, um, that was taken for granted. And the banking system um, uh, showed a lot of its problems. And we had bonds that failed. And it, it affected the real estate market. Um, and from there, it just rippled into everything else. Now, in that process, there was someone by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, who is the creator of Bitcoin. And Satoshi Nakamoto basically started to point out that the amount of trust that we give to banks and the history of trust with banks um, has always been compromised. So how do we move away from that type of system or to a much fairer system or a much more transparent system? And he came up with a, 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 an idea of using a distributed ledger. So in other words, a bank uses a ledger, which they control, and they can put in entries, and they can change it at will. Versus centralized. A decentralized. Centralized. Yeah, it's centralized. So the, the difference is a bank is centralized versus uh, Bitcoin, which is decentralized. And what that means is that all of the ledgers, it uses multiple ledgers that are all synchronized and it uses encryption for, for security. Um, and it, uh, it allows for uh, you to transact and to transfer value in a very simple way. The, 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 the technology for Bitcoin, the underlining technology for Bitcoin is a technology called blockchain. Blockchain technology is a, new, is a protocol that was uh, created by Satoshi Nakamoto and a group of developers also that worked uh, very closely with him, Hal, uh, Hal, Hal Finney and, and many others who, uh, who contribute to the development of this protocol and this network. But that is really where the Bitcoin story begins. It begins in 2008 inside of the financial collapse with Satoshi Nakamoto and some developers working towards building a new framework. Uh, at that time, back in those in, in the early days, uh, it was just an idea and no one knew what would come of it. Uh, when I first discovered Bitcoin, it was in 2010, 2011. Uh, there was a white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto, which we which uh, we read and we thought it was cool, but we never, ever believed that digital money right. would be possible um, back then. We just it just people couldn't wrap their head around it. The dollar was there. It wasn't going away. Um, so it was a cool idea, but uh, it, it was it was way ahead. Can, of can I ask a question? So 
Sure. Natoshi Nakamoto. Nakam How do you pronounce his name? Satoshi no Nakamoto. Nakamoto. So he's a mysterious guy. He kind of disappeared. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so Satoshi Nakamoto could either be a person or persons. It could be a group of mathematicians, scientists. No one knows. Uh, with, no one knows. No one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto. But the point is, it's, it's not the who premise. Satoshi Nakamoto is. What he's, what he's saying is, don't trust in Satoshi Nakamoto. Trust in right. the math. That is really the premise of it. This is why all do you about think math. Why do you think? He kept his identity, or the group kept his identity hidden. You think they were afraid of government retaliation or anything like that? Yo, I'm sure, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, if you're trying to develop a new type of currency, you're always going to be under the eye of governments and, and uh, a lot of institutions. So maybe being anonymous was better. And it's less of a focus, too, because you're just more focused on the technology and going through it and looking at it and saying, okay, how does this work? Is this secure? Can this be used in our systems? And so far, the answer has been yes. So we've had 10 years of, uh, of Bitcoin. Bitcoin uh, and, and, and through that process, through that journey, there's been some ups and downs, but uh, it's, it's been pretty resilient that Bitcoin is still here Today, uh, one Bitcoin is uh, is equal to. I know it's amazing. The price movement is mm -hmm. crazy. So N Natoshi Nakamoto created this new system, blockchain technology. And what do you think the intention was? Uh, well, the intention was to how do we create a system with more trust? Because the current system uh, that we of trust that we have uh, is diminishing right now. Uh, when you look at what central banks are doing, they are printing uh, money. We've printed more money in six months than we have inside of 200 years of this nation's history. So that is a very that's very problematic. So I think Satoshi looked at it from how do I build a trust protocol, right? And he figured out that the way you do that is using peer-to-peer uh, -peer technology. Napster. The same way that um, Napster and BitTorrent, uh, uh, it's a very efficient way to be able to transfer uh, value across the internet. Uh, the, bi the biggest breakthrough is this. When you think about the internet and say uh, you want to send an email, right? Or say I took a picture and I send it to you. Is that an original copy or is that a one of a kind? That is a copy. So for currency and money, that's a problem. Right. That doesn't work. And that, that was, it was figuring out how do we uh, overcome that, the double spend problem. And blockchain uh, and Satoshi and all the developers uh, who worked on that were able to uh, figure that out by using a distributed ledger that can keep track of all. In Bitcoin, there's 21 million max. tokens. You, it's set at max. Yeah, it's so it's a deflationary. You can't create asset. more. You can't you like the U.S. government exactly. printing two trillion dollars <laughs> in the last yeah, six months. Yeah, we printed two trillion. Yeah, we printed two trillion dollars and now they're about to print another right. two trillion dollars. So the more we print, the more trouble that. Our right. And what. Gets right. Right. Real quick. I'm going to switch that. So what does that do to our currency for a lot of people that don't really know monetary policy? So when you are printing money infinitely uh it creates a hyperinflation so if you look at a country like venezuela it was printing so much money that after a while its money just became uh it was equivalent to toilet paper it was worthless and the more that you do that with a currency the more that you print the more you devalue it and that is something that we don't want now the U.S. dollar is is the the dominant currency in the world. 
Uh, 70 percent of trade and commerce around the world is done in the U.S. dollar. Uh, but here's the thing. We are in a new race. We are in a race for mathematics, for technology, for AI, uh, and we're competing with the rest of the world. We're competing with, you know, Asia. We're competing with Europe. Uh, and we need a much more efficient system that's able to transact, to do commerce, to do settlements uh, in, a, in a very quick and efficient way. Uh, the U.S. dollar, as long as we keep continuing to print, that is going to create a lot of problems. People will slowly lose trust. And uh, we, uh, the central bank now here in the United States is now talking about uh, using um, a central bank digital dollar right now. So if you go on and, look, and go on the wires, you can see that conversation happening now that we may need to move towards digital currencies right now just because our old fiat system may not be uh, as uh, right. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize the implications of inflation. I mean, everybody knows that we have inflation. They don't know why. And the reason why is because our government keeps <laughs> printing money. It's an invisible yeah. tax on us. How do we... Yeah. So why is Bitcoin, specifically Bitcoin, considered a store of value, gold, silver, like, like those assets? Yeah. So that, that's a great question. A Bitcoin is many things, actually. So Bitcoin can be used to, uh, as a payment system, as a peer-to-peer -peer payment system. So if you want to send, uh, if I wanted to send you $100, I could send that to you in Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin also is viewed as a commodity like gold. Uh, and it, it's, it's trending more in that way where Bitcoin is viewed as the digital gold now of today. So if you look at what's happening on, on networks like CNBC, a lot of their uh, commentators and a lot of the institutions and a lot of the fund managers refer to Bitcoin as being digital a digital gold. And they're using that as a hedge against what's happening with central banks because if they're going to continue to print, then uh, we need something to hedge. And they're using gold right. and they're also using Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin... I think is something that is for for millennial generation who, who who went through the 2008 financial collapse, who saw their family members lose jobs and lose health care services and and lose you know a lot and uh, it really took a, a huge hit on the trust with banks. So people are looking for alternatives, uh, but that's here in this country. On a bigger picture, we have to talk about the unbanked. So there's 2 billion people on earth who don't have a bank account, who don't have access to financial services, who can invest. And with a smartphone, a digital wallet, and some crypto, uh, that's going to change all that. It's going to change it in the same manner that the internet access, search engines, and all these first uh, these these websites, the Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, the Ebays of the world, uh, the social media platforms of the world have have changed uh, the way our world is today. Uh, we will move towards a world where you can have commerce and trade and send anything of value in a cryptocurrency, whether that is Bitcoin or whether that's a different type of uh, digital asset or token. Mr. M I have a question, Mr. Mo. So, yeah, people in America should start paying attention because of the devaluation of the dollar. So assets like going back to, to gold, silver, and crypto, mm -hmm. some people say art as well, farmland. So these are assets people should be getting into to protect themselves from inflation because their money losing value every year. And if they move that into those types of assets, they can protect themselves, right? Yeah, that's one way you want to look at it. Um, 
the 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 thing what's happening in cryptocurrencies or in the blockchain space is bitcoin was first we view it as a payment system but we also use it as a store of value uh but there's other tokens like ethereum uh, that use smart contracts and and what that does is think of it this way it is a system that allows you to program an asset so you can you could take it and program a currency you can program a stock you can program a derivative uh you can also program it for things like intellectual property right where maybe you don't have to print a million tokens maybe you just print 10 tokens and those tokens become one of a kinds like nfts so for say like an artist uh there's a there's a there's uh there was a um uh, uh, what's his name? The artist, uh, oh, I Andy Warhol, excuse me. Right. Andy Warhol has a piece that he, uh, was able to use a block. They were the, the, they were able to use a blockchain and offer fractional ownership inside of one of his paintings. And they did that through a token system. So people will use cryptos for different things, art, uh, you could use it for real estate, where there's companies now that are offering uh, real estate investments, fractional ownership of buildings, of properties, uh, where you can send in a small portion of Bitcoin and have and participate in that uh, as an investment. Uh, you're seeing cryptos used as payment systems. So companies like Square or even PayPal, PayPal yeah. last week announced, uh, which is, you know, PayPal has 350 million uh, subscribers using their service, and now they're offering Bitcoin as a form of payment. I, I think that that makes, uh, you know, that makes me more bullish on blockchain technology. It's, it's not going away. Um, it's it's definitely not going away. We don't see any signs of that. If anything, we see an increase of institutional investors and Wall Street coming more into this technology and investing more inside of it. When we look at uh, institutions like uh, uh, CME, which uh, create a Bitcoin futures contract, and they make that in, they make that available to the institutional investors across Wall Street. Uh, pensions. Uh, I believe that there is the uh, police department in Virginia now that has uh, a portion of their portfolio. In right. And there was Bitcoin a couple well. of corporations, so right? We're, we're corporations that signs. put their holdings into that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're starting to see them to get more exposure into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And again, because of what's happening with central banks and and what's happening with negative interest rates and uh it's it they're realizing the writing is on the wall so it's not going to happen overnight this is a process just the same way the that internet it took you know I, it took the internet it took a decade for people to get email it took you know time for people to get a website going uh it it, it takes time but we're, we're 10 years in and it's looking uh it's looking like this is going to continue. The idea is this. How do we send money as simple as we send an email? Or That's text. It should be. It should, or text, yeah. You send a text, you send an email. That's the way you should be able to send money. Right now, uh, we see some of right now we have to go to through decentral, um, centralized systems. So I have to go through a bank. Yeah. I have to go through a PayPal. Yeah. I have to go through somebody else. But in the future, I'll be yeah. able to just make a payment to you instantly and you'll right. receive it. Yeah. That's the whole premise of yeah, that. It, 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 yeah, it would be like uh, if we were standing in front of each other and I hand you a $20 bill, we are transacting with, with no one between us. And that's what cryptocurrency allows, for you to transact directly with people uh, with minimal fees uh, on the transactions. Uh, so that that's a that's a very powerful tool. And that's what currency, you know, currency is a tool. When you look at an actual dollar, understand that that dollar that has zero value what has value is what you're paying for so if you're paying for a service if you're paying for a product that product or service is what actually has and value. It, and the, the the note is just for the tool to transfer that and it also opens up the world of investment for people. So like you said, I could invest in a painting yeah. that I couldn't afford by myself. 
a $5 million painting, but now with blockchain and cryptocurrency, I could buy a portion of that and see that grow in value, like a stock, correct? Yes. Yes, that, that, that's the idea that you're giving a generation who's growing up, uh, I, I always refer to it as this is an app generation when you think about it, right? We grew up with vinyl, CDs, physical. VHS, DVDs, all these physical things that we would, that we would you know, consume. Uh, this generation doesn't have vinyl or CDs. They have Spotify or Apple Music, right? So it's all streaming. Uh, when they, when you think about the movies, it's Netflix or Amazon Prime that they're streaming. Um, so it, it for a generation interested in in having uh, the ability to invest in something like Bitcoin, a digital gold, you do that through an app. Right, so your your Netflix app, your Spotify app, your Coinbase app, your Robinhood app, uh, all these things now can be done off a phone, and you're seeing more and more younger people begin to learn and and take advantage of these opportunities. So, and I think that that's going to continue to grow. We we want a generation that's learning the technology, but is also benefiting from making, discovering uh, investments. And you should always make sure that you do always you know, do your research. Make sure that you understand what you're investing in. Um, don't bet the house. Don't you know? Don't don't pull loans and invest. Don't do that. Start simple. Start very 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 simple. Start understanding what the technology is, how it works, and you take small steps until you're comfortable and then you start finding things that you understand that speak to you. And there's all different type of tokens. There's tokens that are focused on things like uh, intellectual property. Uh, there's tokens that are focused on uh, real estate. There's tokens that are focused on all different type of applications. So, so all the different type of tokens uh, is something that people can do the homework, learn about the token, learn about the project, learn about who's behind it. And then if they choose to say, you know what, I like this and I want to make right. an investment in. And we're, we're going to see that for the, in this new generation, not only here in the U.S., but I'm seeing that around the world. Um, I, I do a lot of one-on-ones with people to go through the fundamentals and just to learn the, the basics of technical analysis as well. And um, it's, it's, I see it as a trend happening everywhere. I've, talked, I've spoken to people in Europe. I've spoken to people in Australia, in Asia, in Latin America. Um, I see it everywhere, and sometimes I'm I'm stunned at what's happening, and I'm like, wow, this is really incredible. So I'm very optimistic. I'm very bullish about the technology, the development of it, um, and that it's gonna it's gonna be something that will be as normal as email. It will be as normal as searching the internet uh, and all the other services that we have. Um, you know, the internet really changed our world. So, Mr. Mo, we're gonna stop it there. Next week, tune in again, everybody, to hear the rest of this interview with Mr. Mo. We're going to talk about how you get started, how you invest, where to start when we come back next week. So tune in. Maximize.